Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast, where you learn about advanced wealth building strategies from real estate investing to creating massive ROI and secure retirement profits. So pour yourself a cup of coffee, grab a notepad, and lean in. Because Big Mike has got the mic, starting now. Welcome to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. I'm the Big Mike. Mike Zlatnik. And today it is my pleasure and a privilege to welcome Julian Castle. Hi, Julian. Hi, Mike. How are you? And hi, Mike Fun listeners. Thank you kindly for coming on the podcast. appreciate you. And just a couple of words about Julian. He's a partner in the largest uh, real estate investor group uh, on Facebook called Real Estate Investor Group. Right, that's what it's called. Uh, and right. it has over 170,000 members. When I heard that, uh, it's hard to even imagine so many mem- members. But before we do this, tell a little bit about Julian, uh, your family, where do you live, and then we'll talk about uh, the the group on the Facebook. Yeah. So originally, I was born in Bogota, Colombia. I was raised in Miami, and um, I got into real estate because my family, my dad's in real estate. And so I figured that it was going to be a great opportunity for me to uh, build a family portfolio, but also do my own thing. And I've gotten involved with the Real Estate Investors Group, and we do have 170,000 members. We're the largest private real estate group. Um, and that's that's a key word because a lot of other groups just let anybody in um, who has a Facebook account, and there could be a lot of scammers. So what we do is that we authorize every user that comes into our group. And so we make sure that they're an actual person. We have phone numbers and emails for most of our people. And um, that allows for a a better, safer environment for all real estate investors and just people coming in to to real estate investing in general. And that's great. I appreciate the clarification. Private group requires private, uh, some kind of gates to get in, right? You gotta gotta go through some kind of checks. It's 170,000 members. This is such a gigantic number. Managing that group and, and, and keeping folks engaged is, is a humongous task. It's like a business of its own just running the group. So how many people, I'm just curious, running the group? Is there a group leadership? And forgive me, I'm not a social media person. I don't know yeah. how these large Facebook groups operate. Just enlighten us a little bit on how does uh, 170,000 member group operate on Facebook? Yeah, so... Um... The, my fa- my partner, he's the founder, his name is Marty, and he started the group in 12 years ago. And, and so he's been growing the group very, it's, it's been growing, you know, exponentially every year. Um, and then, um, so it's currently me, Marty, and another person who's, who are managing the operations, but mostly Marty and I. Um, I am now coming in and adding value to the group, bringing in experts like yourself, Mike, in the future, and other people. and. Um, making myself known and as a resource and and giving value, just at having training and bringing in courses from different experts and bundling bundling them up together and creating a library that people can access for a very small payment a month. So and um, it so it, it is a couple of it is work, but um, um, you know we we divide it. You know I'm mostly focused on the growth and. And Marty is focusing on the management, and we're a great team together. I appreciate the clarification. So, what are folks doing these Facebook groups? Just discussions, Q and A, I guess educational content, presentations, webinars. Um, so, besides again bringing in some experts to speak on the subject uh, and building up a library, um, it's it just a lot of Q and A. I assume it's just a live live it is. forum. It is a lot of people post their wins when people have a wholesaling um, that that just went through wholesale deal. They'll post the the check. Also, people will post that they they're they're out, they need some feedback. You know, they're they're in a certain situation in life, and then they want to know what they could do in order to have a better financial outcome. And there's a lot of people that chime in and, and give them answers. Um, there's a lot of people looking for lenders. There's a lot of people looking for partners. There's a lot of people looking for deals, and so. This is a group where all of these people have the opportunity to post and and find what they're missing, find what they need. And so um, we're, we make it so it's a safe environment and we just we want to give um, as much as we can in terms of recommendations. You know, we have partners that we work with that are lenders that we vetted and they're legit. Um, we also have 
property softwares that we've also vetted and and know these to be one of the best resources for people getting into the industry and different activities. So those are some of the things. Yeah, and 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 it makes a lot of sense. Of course, you you want to have vetted vendors, vetted operators, vetted uh, service providers, vetted suppliers. As you mentioned, could be lenders, partners, equity investors. What what I struggle with, and forgive me again, this is designed to yeah. just spur the conversation. I, yeah. I I go to a number of mastermind groups, and some of the groups you probably heard about called the Collective Genius. It has a lot of uh, movers and shakers around the country. Number of other groups that are investor mastermind groups, but they are a few hundred people. I mean, three, four hundred people at the upper range. Yeah, you meet in person, and you wind up the struggles to get to know every single person. So you wind up knowing a small subsystem. Now you have one hundred and seventy thousand members. How do people build relationships? I mean, maybe it's all somehow through forums people get to know each other and through Q&A, but it's, it's a tough job to build a relationship purely virtually and you, when you have such gigantic membership. Just love to hear yeah. your thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah, so for sure. So um, as, a, as a partner in the group, we have some tools available to us that allow us to broadcast some of the messages that we want to share. And so um, Facebook has the at everyone feature, which allows us to add everyone and send them a post. And so we do that. We also have an email list. Everybody that comes in our group, mo most, you know, a good amount of them share with us their email and phone number. And so we add it to our list and, and we send them emails. And, and so in regards, that's how we have a communication with them. Um, but how do they get to connect with each other? Um, usually it's through postings. Um, Either party will usually ask a question or post something in the group, and then the other person will will comment and 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 ask them to reach out or if they can reach out. And so um, then they'll talk offline on on Messenger or on on the phone. And then uh, you know you just you people in the posts usually target someone who they're looking to speak to, someone with more experience than them or a lender or an operator in the area. And so when it comes to that, um, the right people usually see the post and they comment and they say, hey, I'm happy to chat, you know, and then they take it offline and then they build a relationship. So it, it's a great way to meet people and and start relationships. But I believe that the that relationships are built offline, you know, um, over Zooms like this, or phone calls and, and and deals, you know, business. Yeah, it makes sense. You run subgroups because you have such large membership. I can, I can imagine you got to have some, and maybe they call something else, but subgroups that specializes in self-storage and subgroups specializes in multifamily and some groups spe specializes in fix and flip residential or something like this. Just, just curious, how do you, you yeah, different rooms that specialize in sub rooms. I can only imagine you got to have like a whole bunch of breakdown. Otherwise, everyone sees the message that everyone else posts. It becomes a lot of noise. Yeah, yeah, that is true. So currently, we don't have any segmentation of the group, but that is something we're doing right now um, with the library of courses that we're building for all the members for a low monthly price. Um, we're going to add a Discord feature to our group, which means that um, people that want to be more connected can go to our Discord. And in Discord, there is going to be different channels there. And so people are going to be able to talk about single family. We're going to be able to talk about multifamily or self-storage and these kinds of different asset classes and and types, you know. So... So yes, um, that will be in the future. Currently, people just find their way through making the right post, and and the people just see the right post, and then they they engage, they they comment. Yeah, understood. Um, do you do any kind of polling to better understand your membership? In other words, who are passive investors looking to deploy capital? Who are um, specific folks that do fix and flip in Oklahoma City? And Phoenix and Miami, you have yeah. sort of, how do you get to know your membership and what are their needs? Yeah, we have done some polling in the past. We've asked like what areas do people invest in? And we have a record of that. Um, we, we have 
a few, you know, we have in place some new pollings that we'll be rolling out. And some of those include some of your questions, like what asset types do you invest in and, and what areas and, and what kind of, you know, active real estate investor are you, you know, wholesale f- fix and flipper, buy and hold, all kinds of things. So these are all data that we can pull and, and it's usually very easy to create a poll. So, um, yeah, these are things, data that we're going to be collecting. Interesting. Yeah, I can imagine this is something that with that large membership, you you would have to have a lot of uh, data polls and a lot of uh, engagement on the members. Otherwise, the folks would join and then not be engaged. One of the big, one of the biggest challenges with these super large groups is engagement. Yeah. Either folks stay engaged or it becomes you know <laughs> uh, a member that's just just not there. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um... In terms of our engagement, we have analytics, and in the past month, we have 80,000 active users. So it is a large amount of people who are active. Um, however, there's many posts that go on every day, and some of them don't have any engagement because the people posting didn't do a good job of making the post or something like that. So there's just a lot of posts that, that don't really have engagement, but there are some that are that are good they're well crafted, and then those posts get a lot of engagement and bring a lot of people together. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, by the way, again, I'm not an expert in these platforms. Uh, it just yeah. there's a bigger pocket platform with a lot of membership and a lot of people stay engaged there. So, yeah. how do you differentiate between a specialty platform like Bigger Pockets versus you know Facebook real estate investment group? So, I believe um, what Bigger Pockets has that we don't is a higher it's a, a, they have a, a, a bigger presence. They do a lot more podcasts. They've been around for longer and they've built a good community of, of real estate investors. And the, the community works similar to Facebook in the sense that people can post and comment and, and message each other. And so we have that feature. Um, and, and so I would say the biggest difference is, is the, the presence, the presence and, and, and potentially, I'm sure they do some more like community management that, that we don't do since we're we're a team of two. But now that I'm in their operations, you know, now, now that I'm a partner of it, I'm I'm taking, you know, doing content, I'm doing newsletters, I'm sending out, you know, asking for deals. I'm I'm going to be sending out deals also to our members, and so there's going to be a bigger community that is going to be unfolding, and. We might take it somewhere else. You know, we might take it to Discord, or we might take it to, you know, a platform online like like Bigger Pockets did. And so that's that's in the future. Um, but currently, Bigger Pockets has a, just a bigger presence. They have more people for sure, I believe. Probably people that are a little bit more um, sophisticated because of all the content they've done. And um, and but you know, we're 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 similar in some ways. We're similar in some ways, and and there is um, th- there are things that we do that w- that bigger pockets has, and I would say the main difference is they're hosted on their own website. We're hosted on Facebook. Right, it makes sense. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Julian and your aspirations. Uh, so what do you see yourself growing? Is, is this a um, uh, something you're trying to to grow? Just a social media presence, a bigger um, group, more valuable group, or are you looking to do something more active yourself? Just curious what, what's been your um, kind of what, what have you done in real estate and what are you looking to do? Yeah, yeah. So my aspirations as they stand right now is I want to have a lot of assets under management um, and I want to grow my brand as well. So the Facebook group plays a big role in this because it's an audience that has already been built and I can add value to them. And there's going to be more people that are attracted to me um, based on the type of content that I do, the people that I bring on, the type of knowledge that I share, the document, like the, the content that I share is I document my journey. And in terms of real estate, I am looking to buy and a lot of assets, um, usually in multifamily, self-storage, medical office, and retail. Those are the 
the, the four acid types that I know more than others. And currently right now, as I stand, I started um, learning real estate about a year ago and in Grand Cardone Real Estate Summit. And I was a mentor of him in, in that seminar event. And also I'm a mentor of Manny Koshman. He has a billion in transactions. And so I've, I've learned. And so I have a lot of members in these groups that I was a part of that also want to invest with me and we want to find deals together. And so the, the way forward is to just buy a lot of assets and create a brand and, and just enjoy the journey, really. Yeah, and I appreciate you sharing this. So where do you think your capital is going to come from? To uh... So my family has, um, we have a building in, in Miami Beach. It's, uh, it's around $25 million. And it's a two and a half cap. And, and so it's, it's not producing a lot. And I'm already taking the lead and finding an opportunity to, to get out of this building and into a better building that creates more cash flow for the family. And so I have that access to capital, but mostly because of I'm connected with a lot of real estate investors who are successful. Um, if I, if I come across a deal, then I'll go ahead and raise the money myself and partner with some of these real estate investors that I, that, that I'm networking with and, and do the deals together, just grow from doing and learn along the way yeah i appreciate uh your sharing um certainly familiar with the miami beach we have an asset there too and uh i i guess the cap rates are low but um the, the uh, land value is high yeah definitely land values are high of course and relatively speaking depending on what kind of asset you have um uh the values is a mix of a cap rate and location of course um yeah uh, we're so having to lock away from collins yeah, yeah, we we have an asset on Collins as well. So we we have a we have a hotel we converted to multifamily over there. Not to multifamily, sorry, to Airbnb. It's uh, that's what well, that's a, a lot of Airbnb is is kind of a hot hot topic in South Beach. It's kind of a great yeah, yeah, it it is yeah, that's that, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so um, any final suggestions? Any good book you you have to recommend? Any so obviously. And how do folks join your group if they're interested to join the group? Uh, is there a process? Uh, so I went on a, on a Facebook and searched for real estate investors group, and it's right there. It popped in, popped up, one hundred seventy thousand members, and just folks request to join. Right, that's that's the process. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. You go on Facebook and you can just you know ask to be entered into the group. We we do ask for name, email, and phone number, and and yes, you know, a couple of questions there, and that's to better serve you, to be able to provide resources to you and to be able to to tell you about any upcoming events that we're doing or any other affiliate partners that we're promoting. And and then in terms of me, a favorite book, um, the one of the, my favorite books that really opened up my mind towards real estate investing was the book by it's it's. It's the Almanac of Naval Ravikant. Um, he's, a, he's a very famous um, startup investor. He's an angel investor. And, and he basically wrote down that in, in life, the things that people should do to get a rich life is to go after high leverage opportunities. And so these are like using capital, um, using labor, using media, like content, and using code like software these are like the four main types of things you can do nowadays in order to achieve a big amount of wealth and so i decided that because i have family in real estate and i'm a very good people person that's my superpower i would say that i'd be a great um real estate investor and so i've chosen to go the capital route and create a fund and also the media route of create a brand and so that's the way i Look forward to creating my wealth, and I think that for anybody who who is not into a trajectory where they can make it big, that book is a great resource to open up their eyes and to up, learn a new way of looking at life. Yeah, I appreciate the sharing. Um, it, it, 
kind of things you mentioned, the software obviously has a great leverage. Uh, some great companies have been built uh, from nothing to multi-billion dollar operation uh, in software and, and so is the media. And real estate is kind of old and slow. It's funny. You mentioned real estate, but real estate is a um, uh, kind of an old business, although it's has taken some of the new twists. Like you can have a group of 170,000 members build rather quickly. Now, can you monetize the group? It's almost like when you talk about the real estate investment group on Facebook, it is more media than it is real estate, if I think about it. Uh, it I mean, is home, true. But to me, real estate is really deals, finding opportunities, uh, raising capital, structuring deals, negotiating, obviously, terms, and finding great deals at the end of the day. It's not about doing just the deals. It's about doing great deals, especially That's in this true. environment. Things have changed. A few years ago, it was all momentum play. But now it, it's about getting a great deal or getting no deal because That's you true. can't in this environment just go buy a property because you're going to overpay. And the perception of, uh, of risk has changed quite a bit with, with high interest rates. So That's um, true. any final thoughts? Again, we have a couple of minutes left. So you share the book. Um, how would folks get a hold of you? Just join the group. I'm just, just curious if folks wanted to connect, connect with you. What's the best way to connect? Yeah, for sure. So um, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram at Julian Castle Official. And um, that's a great way to connect with me. It's very easy. And I would say if you're looking to connect, do deals together. Are you an investor looking to invest passively? Or, you know, if you're just looking to for a good, interesting conversation, um, you can go ahead and connect with me. Um, I'll, I'll reach back out to you and give you the time of my day and, and we can connect. Um, we can, you know, share, you know, support each other in our goals. And, and, um, and yeah, I think that, that that's a great way to, to connect with me for sure. Thank you, Julian. I appreciate you coming on a podcast, sharing uh, about you, your journey, uh, real estate investment, investor group on Facebook. Very intrigued. I didn't realize there are groups that big. I thought, it's almost like it's got to be its own um, side, like like the uh, um, bigger like pockets. Bigger pockets. Yeah, yeah, but it, 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 there are other groups like this on Facebook, apparently. So that's great. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And, and I invite everyone to come check out the Real Estate Investors Group. We're a great community. We're always I'm looking to um, improve it and make it a better environment for everybody to be there. So if you're new to real estate investing or if you're already a real estate investor, you can go ahead and find people that are in a like-minded journey as yourself. And, and yeah, you'll find me there. I'll be doing announcements and bringing in people like Big Mike to, to do a podcast and, and just sharing knowledge. So um, I invite everyone, and, and I'm very grateful to be in the podcast, and I thank you, Mike. Thank you, Julian. Thank you for listening to the Big Mike Fun Podcast. To receive your copy of Mike's How to Choose a Smart Real Estate Fun Book, head to BigMikeFun.com or visit Amazon and type Mike's slot name. Keep listening and keep investing Big Mike style. See you on the next episode.